Gentlemen, thank you for your patience. I told you a little bit about the man himself, Dr. Richard. So please give up for one and only International Market Day of the Year, author of five best selling books. Somebody who can teach you how to outthink and not outspend your competitor, Bob Richard. I guess you come from large retail and you come from small retail. And some of you are new to retail, and some of you have been in retail for a long time. There's one thing that you need to know. But I think you'll find that change catches up with you extremely quickly. Zuckerberg's law. We're going to get twice as much information this year as we did last year. And we're going to get twice as much information the year after as we did next year. Which means in 10 years from now, we're going to be getting 2,000 times more information in a year than we are this year. 2,000 times more information in 10 years than we're getting now. That is a hell of a change. And it changes everything. Customers have changed. These two photographs are from the same event nearly 10 years apart. Look how much the customers change. Can you turn the lights out here? That's 2005. That's 2013. What's the difference? Everybody's got mobile phones. Everybody's got pads. What are they doing? They're tweeting. They're sending off their messages to their friends. So the people that have seen that, not only the people in the room, but all of their friends and all of their friends' friends. So the customer has changed enormously just over the last couple of years. But companies haven't changed. 87% of the focus of all companies is still on product, price, brand awareness, and satisfied customers. Let me ask you a few questions. Who thinks that good products are important? Got good hands up and think good products are important. What about price? Price is important. Who thinks price is important? Most of you. What about satisfied customers? Who thinks satisfied customers are important? Most of you. What about brand awareness? It's important that everybody knows who you are or they won't buy from you. Not so much, but still. Now, <laughs> time. Now, 87% of companies are still selling based on product, price, satisfied customers and brand awareness. Time magazine, 80, 95% of all marketing today does not work. So we're out there spending all this money on traditional marketing and it isn't working. So we have to change something. Just 
Coca-Cola. Sergio Zona from Coca-Cola, who built their whole business on advertising, says that traditional advertising isn't dying, it's dead. And that's Coca-Cola saying that. It's dead. So we have to change the way we think. So how do we blow away our competition today and how do we attract these new customers? Well, there's several ways. We have to understand the marketing fundamentals first. And most people don't. So, Nobody could tell the difference. They were all 
the same selling based on price. You know what happens if you sell based on price? You make less profit. You know what happens if you make less profit? You become less competitive. You know what happens if you become less competitive? You go broke. So you cannot sell based on price. You've got to get away from that. The most successful businesses, 80% of sales come from word of mouth. You get sales because somebody tells somebody else how great your product or service is. So if you can't get 80% of your business from word of mouth, you will lose. I mean, today it's a whole different ball game because if somebody can spread the word to millions of people almost instantaneously, and I'll give you a couple of examples of that in a moment. Today we need to give people awesome customer service, not just good customer service, but fantastic customer service. And if we don't do that, we will definitely lose. We have to knock their socks off. People have got to do business with you and walk out and go, wow, that was sensational. And if you can't get that reaction, you will lose. So, word of mouth is so unbelievably powerful today. I'll give you a couple of examples. A lady put up a Facebook page a few months ago about um, Monsanto and um, modified foods, genetically modified foods. So she put up a, a Facebook page for a protest day a couple of months in advance. So we got one Facebook page. You know what happened? She got over 2 million people in 365 cities in 80 countries out there on the street protesting against against Monsanto. Two million people on the street in 80 countries, 360 something cities, protesting against Monsanto. How powerful is that? About three or four weeks ago, a guy in Los Angeles tweeted that there was going to be a car at eight o'clock at night. One tweet went out at 8 o'clock at night that there was going to be an impromptu flash car show in a um, mall parking lot that night. One tweet, 8 o'clock, by 9.30 there were 600 cars on display and 3,500 people turned up from the start of one tweet. How powerful. The Arab Spring, all organised by Twitter. Uprising right across the middle of it, all organised by Twitter. So if people can all use Twitter and Facebook to organise two million people in a demonstration against Monsanto, and they can organise it to get a flash crowd of thousands of people in a shopping mall, and they can use it to organise the Arab Spring, why the hell aren't you retailers using it? Why aren't you using it to drive people to your businesses? How hard can it be? Somebody wants to organise a protest, you do it. You guys are smarter than that. But you're not using it. And there's so much potential. The potential is simply enormous. The other thing, but we need to, we talk about awesome customer service, but just look at the reality. We look at PricewaterhouseCoopers shows. Cooper shows that today, sorry, last year, 45% of the contribution to driving business growth was from customer service. 45% was from great customer service. Only 26% was from new products and 29% from advertising and promotion. Customer service leaders, people who've got great customer service, can charge 9 to 13% more for their product to not lose a customer. But if you can get an extra 9%, that represents a big profit. 
and people with great customer service grow 25 to 40% faster than their competitors. So let's look at the contribution return on investment. Again, last year, customer service, nearly 60% of the contribution, the return on investment of the most successful companies was from customer service. 60%. New products, 27%, and advertising and promotion, 14%. But we still do the same stuff. We've also got to understand what business we're in. Too many of us think we're in retail. If I say to you what business you're in, you say I'm in retail. No, you're not. You know, let's think I've got an example here of um, a hardware store. Why do people go to a hardware store? Not because they've got a passionate desire to buy a hammer. They don't wake up in the morning and say, Today I'm going to buy a hammer. They go to the hardware store to buy a hammer because they've got a problem of some sort that they need to fix. So they go to the hardware store because it solves their problems. So they're in the problem solving business. And the problem solving business is a totally different business than the hardware store business. And so we need to realise that. We had an example a few years ago, a company called Luxreflex who make blinds. And they were going bankrupt. And uh, they came to us and asked us how they could fix it. And we went out and spoke to them. And we found that, you know, they, they, all their ads said, we make blinds, we make pink blinds, blue blinds, green blinds, white blinds, vertical blinds, horizontal blinds, plastic blinds, wooden blinds. We sell all these blinds. People don't care. You know why people buy blinds? To keep their home cool. That's a totally different business than selling blinds. So we went from, we sell all these different kinds of blinds, we changed their marketing to keep your home cooler in summer. Didn't mention the blinds. Sales went through the roof. We saved the company. Because if you don't know what business you're in, you can't communicate. How can you communicate with people? How can you use social media effectively if you don't know what it is that motivates people to buy your product? So you need to work on that. Now how do you build a business? It's really very simple, isn't it? You've got regular customers that have got to come in more often. Regular customers have got to buy more stuff and you've got to get new customers. If you do those three things, you're home, right? But how hard can that be? So what's the most cost-effective and easiest way to do that? Well, firstly, you have to differentiate yourself. You've got to be different than your competitor because if you all look the same, why should they buy from you? Why can they just buy from the competitor? So you have to be different. And it's not that hard to differentiate yourself. You're all smart, right? Who, who thinks they're not smart? Anybody here thinks they're an idiot? <laughs> Anybody? You all look pretty blank, so you could be. <laughs> Put your hand up if you think you're pretty smart. <laughs> Let's try this again. It's really simple. This is a hand. So you see it, and up is that direction. <laughs> and if you think you are pretty smart, what you do is you take this thing here and you whack it up like that. It's not that hard. People can do it. I've seen little kids do it. So let's try it again. Everybody who thinks they're smart, stick that hand up. That's much better. Still a couple of dumb shits. <laughs> But nevertheless, okay, simple question. Which one of those numbers doesn't fit? <laughs> you are as fucking dumb as six. <laughs> Two doesn't fit, does it? I mean, I even told you. I even put it up there in red. I just said which number doesn't fit. They all look like one. 
ones and threes for me, except one, two. Now, I got a little, I had a son who was about six, and he said, two, daddy, don't fit. Okay. So, we don't smoke smart, we work that out. So, we, we've got to think outside the box, and to think outside the box, you've got to get rid of your current way of thinking. Just forget it, because it's not going to work in the future. Oh, we had a gentleman's shoe store came to us and said, um, we're competing against Walmart. And the problem with competing against Walmart is Walmart have got so much buying power, they have so much clout, that they can actually buy the shoes, put a margin on them, and sell them cheaper than we can buy them. So we're getting killed. And I'm sure there's a few of you in that position. You've got bigger competitors who have got better buying power. So, you can't beat them on price. What you can beat them on is wow factor. You can beat them on wow factor. So what we did, we got the shoe store and we filled it with sand. Just filled the shoe store with sand. And put in a whole bunch of play toys to play in the sand. So kids came in. I don't buy in the sand that they think you should. So, just think mum says to the kids, we're going to go buy some shoes today, who'd like to go to Walmart? I think so. Who'd like to go to the yellow balloon where you can play in the sand? Yes! That's what I want to do. The yellow balloon shoe store was selling shoes at almost twice the price of Walmart and was packed to the doors because was different and it wasn't worth the fight with the kids. Mm. All we did was change the environment and make you a wow. Now anybody can do that. It's not hard. We had a client who made wooden blinds. Just wooden blinds. Wooden blinds are expensive. So we said, okay. What can we do that's different that's not going to cost us any money? Because it's all right to say, I listened to somebody on a panel yesterday, and I can't remember who it is, I hope they're not in the room, because it was just plain stupid. Why don't we just give people stuff? So if I one pair of shoes, why don't we give them another pair of three? Geez, that's a good recipe for making a lot of money, isn't it? Who wants to do that? So, what you've got to do is add value that doesn't cost you anything. Now that takes some thought. It's not easy. But nothing's easy. Retail's not easy anymore. So you've got to think harder. So what we did, mm -hmm. I ran, well, we started off and went and saw people and said, when you buy new blinds and they're installed, what's it? Is there a problem with them? And they said, no, the biggest problem is usually the windows are dirty. Yeah, they put the new lines on dirty windows. So I ran the local window cleaner guy and I said, when we put in lights, would you come and clean the windows inside and out in our clients' houses? We're not going to pay you for it. I'm not going to give you any money. But I'm going to introduce you to the householder and if you're any good, you can get work from it. So they said, yes, OK, we'll do that. So then I thought, that was pretty easy. Now, I ran the local gardening company and I said, when we put the blinds in, how about you come around and mow the lawn to do the gardens? I'm not going to give you any money, but I'll introduce you to the householder and if you're in good, you'll get a gardening contract in the house. And they said, okay. So before they used to come along and put in the blinds. Who cares? That's what they paid for. They no advantage. Now, you get your blinds for you, people come around, they wash your windows, they mow your lawns, they trim your hedges, your house looks fantastic. I made the same offer. Because I'm not paying for these people. But, when they talk to their friends, they say, well, you know, I could have got blinds from 10 companies, I went to this one, and now I've got clean windows, I've got all this stuff happening. But all they do is buy lights. Their business improved 397% increase in business. The cost to us, nothing. 
So four times the business, no cost. That's just using your head. It's thinking outside the box. And that's what you have to do. Frito Lay. Is he going to go Frito Lay? Kip sales are a bit flat. They engage to do something about increasing sales. So we put lenticulars in the pack. You know the things that change as you move them. We put them in the pack. They cost us less than one penny each. One penny in a pack of Lay's crisps. Sales increased $130 million in three months. $130 million bucks for a lousy little one penny lenticular in a pack. People would go into the store, buy a packet of chips, take the lenticular and throw the chips away. One penny to make $130 million. So it's not nothing about your budget anymore. Any idiot can spend money. Anybody can spend money. I've had five wives. Believe me, any idiot can spend money. <laughs> Particularly if you're married to them. So, spending money is easy. Anybody can do that. We don't want to spend any money. We want to make a profit. Business is about making a profit. It's not about giving stuff or making a free. You know, somebody who tells you to sell a pair of shoes, give another pair away for free, is an idiot. It's about making a profit. So you've got to increase your revenue and decrease your cost to offer it. Now, I've just told you that 95% of all advertising money today, and this is from Jive Day, does not work. So 95% of it. So next time, you go buy it at the newspaper or put that on television. Why don't you just take a great pile of money and set fire to it? The result is the same. There are much better ways to communicate with your customers, much better ways to build loyalty and not spend so much money. We need to spend less money, maximise revenue, make more profit. That's what we do. So it's the little things that make a difference. And it's not easy. Some of these things have taken us months to come up with. Jaguar. Jaguar came to us and said, we just bought a double page ad in the Los Angeles Times, which cost them about $400,000. You know how many cars they sold from that ad? No. Not one. So $400,000 ad in the LA Times, not one sale. Hey. Geez, that's good business, isn't it? Yep. Yep. <laughs> How long do you reckon it take to go broke doing that? So we went along to the theatre in Los Angeles and we waited until somebody drove up in about a four-year-old Mercedes. So somebody turned up in a four-year-old Mercedes and we walk up and we say, Hello, sir, how are you? Would you like to test drive the new Jag for the weekend? Cost you nothing. We'll take your car, we'll have the detail for you so we can come back on Monday. It'll look fantastic. But take the car and test drive it. So the people took the car, test drove it. You know how many cars we sold? 19. You know the cost? Nothing. So they spent 400 grand, couldn't sell one car. We spent nothing and sold 19 cars. Because we thought about it just a little bit differently. And that's what you have to do today. So, size of the budget doesn't matter. We've also got to sell emotionally. You know, every decision that we make, every decision that we make, this is proven medical fact, every decision that we make is made emotionally. We first of all say, yes, I'd like to have that. Yes, I'd like to buy that. Emotional decision. Now I, I, I justify it pragmatically. Can I afford it? Would I like it? Would I put it take it home? Would it fit in with the day call? Would the wife like it? All of that stuff. But initially, the decision to buy it is made emotionally. 
So why don't we sell emotionally? Walk around to when you leave here, walk around and look at every one of these things and find one that has any emotional type whatsoever. They're the most boring bunch of stairs I've ever seen. Okay. You can walk past any of them and go, wow, I don't know with that. That really grabs me. No, right? No. So people make decisions emotionally. Why don't we advertise emotionally? Why don't we market emotionally? Let me tell you how strong emotion is. Has anybody here, anybody here been to Disneyland? Have this place on earth. Hands up. Okay? Let me just give you a clue about Disneyland. You say to your kids, and they're little kids, right? They're this big. You say to your kids, next week we're going to go to Disneyland. And they're like, oh, I'm all right here. Disneyland is fantastic. They haven't been there yet. They're already excited. Right? Haven't been there, already excited. What is the same rule as this? Opal. Opal. If I said to you, next week we're all going to go to Opal, how many of you would go, yes, Opal, God, can't wait? Anybody? <laughs> no, I hate to tell you, <laughs> you're excited. <laughs> you wouldn't, would you? Now, so, okay, kids are excited. What do they do? The next morning they wake up and they say, how many sleeps will this be like? You say, five more sleeps. Next day, how many sleeps? Four sleeps. This goes on. Then you get the morning of this year, these little kids are up at 5 o'clock in the morning, up at 15, toothbrush, their rooms clean, they're ready to go. If it's school day, you can't get them out of bed. But going to Disneyland, they're ready. So, you get in the car, you drive to Disneyland. From my place to Disneyland is about three hours. So you sit in the traffic for three hours. You finally get there. Happiest place on earth. First thing you see, thousands of cars, 44,000 cars trying to park. Right? That's all right. Busy man, how many places on earth? So, you finally get a park, and you get to the gate to buy your ticket, you stand in line. That's all right. Busy man, how many places on earth? So you finally get to the window, and you say, two adults, two children, and they say, four hundred dollars. And you go, that is expensive. But that's your office in Disneyland. Happy place on earth. 400 bucks. Hey, no problem. So you get in there and you say to your kids, come on, let's go down to um, Pirates of the Caribbean. So you grab the kids, off you go as fast as you can go. And you get down to Pirates of the Caribbean. And what's the first thing you see when you get into Disneyland? What's the first thing you see? A line, isn't it? They've got the biggest lines in the world. The lines go for miles. But that's all right. And Disney sticks up the sign saying, the wait from this point is one and a half hours. And you go, oh, only one and a half hours. That's cool. This is Disneyland. So you wait for an hour and a half. You go into the ride. Five minutes later, it's over. Five minutes. You've been waiting in line for an hour and a half. So they say, come on, kid, let's go somewhere else. Off you go. You race out of Tiffany Village or something, and you stand in line for another hour. That's right, this is Disneyland. But it's lunchtime. So you go to buy food, there's a bloody great line. You go to have a lift, bloody great line. The average person that goes to Disneyland stands in a line for 6 hours and 15 minutes. Think about that. You go to Disneyland, six hours and fifteen minutes standing in line. And what are you saying when you leave? Wasn't that fantastic? <laughs> now, images. If they kept you waiting for lunch for six and a half hours, what would you say? Bang, at least I'm never coming back here again. But Disneyland, the kids say, can we go to Disneyland again next week? Emotion. Emotion, they have got in before you even get there. That's how powerful emotion is. Anybody here got Mercedes? BMW. Anybody got Scoop? 
Thì toàn B5 Quái toàn B5 Emotional 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 He thinks he looks really cool in the BMW. That's why I like it. I drive the Sadies. And I've got Linda that goes down. I drive around town, down to Beverly Hills in my convertible Mercedes, and I think I'm pretty cool. That's why I like it. But when you ask people, I say, oh, I would because it was safe. Rush. Buy a box for you, you're fucking safe. You want safe? Buy something safe. Buy a Volvo. But people buy it emotionally. Women wear makeup, don't they? Every woman wears makeup. Why do you wear makeup? Hope. I hope I'm going to look better with makeup than I do with that. Emotional. <laughs> Let's look at. That's hard to see, but. Johnson's baby power. We don't like that sort of Johnson's baby power. They sell a connection between baby power and a loving family. So you see Johnson's baby power, you see the mother and the child in a beautiful relationship, and that's great. What do the competitors do? They hold up a nappy or a diaper, and they fill it with water. Now, what do you want to buy? <laughs> a soggy diaper with full water, or do you want a great relationship with your child? And then they wonder why they can't knock off Jay Jack, because Jack and Jay are selling emotion. And it's all about emotion. So when you go back to your stand, have a look at your stand and see what sort of an emotional connection you are making with your customers. But I'm telling you, there's not one out there that's making any. And it can make such a huge difference. Have a look at your brochures. Brochures are supposed to drag the customer in, get them excited about it, give them an affinity with your company. And all the brochures that I've seen, none of them do that. And unless you do, you're going to have a problem. Now, this is the interesting part. I've just listened to that last session about um, social media and the effect that social media is going to have. And I think everybody is really underestimating what's going to happen with social media, what is happening with social media. The change is extraordinary and very quick. And it might take a little bit more time to be here, in India, but let me tell you what's happening in the States. And it'll happen here very soon. But why should you use your media? First of all, 1.15 billion people use Facebook. 1.15 billion. 550 million people use Twitter. 1.65 billion people have smartphones. People check their smartphones a year as 195 times a day. They look at their smartphone. 195 times a day. So, do you want to run around in a newspaper that nobody's going to read in the first place, or do you want to have it on something that somebody's going to look at 195 times a day? And newspapers are expensive. This thing costs practically nothing. You know, Coca-Cola is now sending out 7 million tweets and um, posts a day. Coca-Cola in America is sending out 7 million tweets and posts a day. Now, I don't know, I work for Coca-Cola, but you know, they are smart those guys. They know what's happening. And so, it's extraordinary why people still use traditional media. 79% of money is still spent traditional media despite the fact that people are doing something else. If you have a look at the trend among the market leaders, the 100 top companies in the States, if you have a look at where the up is, social media, online videos, search engines, 
Yeah, all the way it's not done, magazines, yellow pages, all, all the stuff that's traditional, they're not getting the revenue. Getting close to your customers. You think about it. But, um, what you can do with social media is you can get to identify who your customers are, you know, who they are, you know, where they live, you know, what their preferences are. You don't have to think about them. You really understand your customers. You understand their likes and their dislikes. You can communicate with them one-on-one any time you want to. You can generate very extensive viral marketing. Just get it going. You let it flow itself. And you know precisely where your customers are at all times. And this is what's going to be really interesting. <coughs> Face-to-face interactions in social media in the last 12 months with the outperforming CEOs are 256%. Traditional media down 61%. It's changing. And mobile is fantastic for driving retail. Now, just with something like Facebook and Twitter, you can position messages precisely to your customers or the people who like you or are connected with you any time you want in your own time frame, depending on where they're located. So you can send different messages to different people in different places. That's before they decide to buy. When they're driving in their car, you know where they are. So if they're within two miles of your store, you can contact them in your in their car and tell them why they should go to your store. It could be an offer, it could be all sorts of things. One on one. You're not flooding the market to millions of people. You're sending it specifically to a person who you know exactly where they are near your store. When they get to your store, you can talk to them in store. And if they're walking through the pet aisle, you can talk to them about buying a dog. You know where they are. You know who they are. You know what they're interested in. You know whether they're male. You know whether they're female. And you can talk to them in store. You can make them offers in store. There are companies in America that have changed prices in store as people approach, depending on what they're likely to buy. So you've got total control of the customer before they leave home, all the way until they get into the store. When they get into the store, you can location, direct them to anywhere you want. When they get to the checkout, you can still talk to them and make them special offers at the checkout. And when they leave the store after buying stuff, you can in touch with them, you can get them to um, give them rewards for taking photographs of what they just bought, distributing it to all their friends, putting it up on Twitter, putting it up on Facebook. So you can have somebody actually buying things in your store, sending out messages to all their friends saying they're in your store. And they're doing that now. Stores have got facial recognition now where they get, they, when you buy something, they get your face. As you walk into the door, they identify who you are and the, the shop assistant comes over and says, Hello, Mr. Smith, how are you? Good to see you again. They know when you were in there the last night. They know you were there three weeks ago. They know you bought a box of chips. So they say, Hello, Mr. Smith, how are you? Good to see you again. How are those chips working out for you? Is that better than a newspaper or television? The latest Coca-Cola ad in Romania, I don't know whether anybody saw it, the latest Coca-Cola ad takes tweets live from people in their homes and the tweets come up on the television in the ad live, real time. It is on gangbusters and it costs nothing. It's as cheap as cheap as cheap. So these things are happening. So the people who are sitting on the panel don't seem to realise that these things are happening and they're happening unbelievably fast. Retailers, just a few examples of retailers who are using new media. J. Crew, big American retailer, manufacturer of clothing, 
Always launch their catalogue by mailing out the 70 million American households. So a big catalogue, mailed out to 70 million people. Pretty expensive, huh? You know what they did this year? They launched it on Pinterest. So instead of printing 70 million catalogues, they put them up on Pinterest. Sales were great. 1888 Hotel in Australia. They give you free rooms. If you've got 10,000 Instagram followers, they'll give you a free room. All you've got to do is Instagram all your friends that you're there. So they're getting 10,000 free ads and all they do is give you a free room. Oreo cookies, we all know, probably all know about Oreo cookies in the Super Bowl. Anybody know about Oreo cookies in the Super Bowl? What happened in the Super Bowl? How this can happen in America, I have no idea. But, and 100,000 people in the stadium, halfway through the game, power failure. So the game at Stockton was pitched up, and it took about 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get the power back off during the Super Bowl. Big and big boys. So Oreo started putting out tweets and Facebook things saying, don't worry, you can still dunk Oreos in the dark. And they killed them. They got so much publicity and it was brilliant. I mean, absolutely fantastic. The cost? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. So on the front page of every newspaper, they were on every television show, radio show, talk show, and the cost was zero. Coca-Cola used YouTube. Click on the bottle and um, it would take you out to a whole bunch of other media outlets within seconds. One of them is Taylor's. They use retweeting seconds on Twitter to get a discount on your price. Twelve hundred percent return on investment. Twelve hundred percent. Taco Bells. QR codes. You know the QR codes, the little box QR codes? Use QR codes or quick cuts to get um, free music downloads. 270,000 people bought a product to download a song. And Scotty P. Hamburgers used SMS, got 1,650% return on investment. So there's examples from Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, QR codes and SMS on how you can use social media at no cost to get fantastic results. How many of you are using social media? How many of you are using it to this degree? I mean, it's going to happen. And it's going to happen quick. Facial recognition is one that you should get onto because it's very important. The next thing you need is you've got to do it with passion. Whatever you do, you have to be really passionate about it. And if you're not, don't do it. And you've got to surround yourself with people who are equally passionate. People who really care. People who get up in the morning and want it. How many of you surround yourself with people who come in in the morning and give you a whole bunch of suggestions on how your business should be better? Anybody? Well, you should. You know, I, um, this is, this is not a good thing or a bad thing, so I'm not saying it either way. But I was um, one of the two people responsible for World Series Rick for one day quick, which you guys are pretty good at, I can't tell you. Um, but I worked for Gary Packer, and we, just, we um, created World Series Rick. And Kerry used to say, never hire anybody that's not smarter than you. It doesn't matter what level of they are in the company, if they're not smarter than you, you can only go backwards. You can't go forwards with people who aren't smarter than you. So we need to surround ourselves. I know that all the people that work for me are not necessarily excited unless they work in the morning going, yippee! I'm not interested. I don't want them. I want people who really care, who want to help develop the business, who want to be great. Now a lot of people just run a big adult daycare centre. You know, it's somewhere for people who have nothing else to do to go through the day. That doesn't get you anywhere. You've got to be passionate. You know, I'm like this all the time. Total pain in the ass. I know. But this is the way I am. 
Now, I'm just on 70 years old. And I feel great. I feel like I'm 25. I look at you, most of you look like you've been dead for six months. I mean, where's the passion? Where's the enthusiasm? Where's the excitement? You've just been at a great conference. You know, there's uh, one thing before I, before I finish up, I just want to say, this is the third time I've done images, not the fourth time. And these guys are great. The images put on conferences that are as good as any on the planet. They really are great at it. So let's, let's have a round of applause for it. They really do it well. So, um, but you've got to be passionate, you've got to be enthusiastic, and you've got to engage people that are enthusiastic. And the way I look at it is like this. Zero is when you're born, right? 75 is about when you become useless. <laughs> now, if you look at me, that's about where I am. That's all I've got left, it's a bit underneath the line. And the blue bit, is when I'm doing things I don't want to do. I'm in the bathroom, I'm standing in a line, I'm doing stuff I don't really want to do. So all I've got left is the bit that's white under that red line. That's all I've got left. I don't have time not to be enthusiastic. I don't have time not to be great. I don't have time not to do the right thing by people. I don't have time not to mentor other people. I don't have time not to do the right thing all the time. I don't have time. And neither do you, because you never know when your time's up. Eleven years ago, on the 2nd of November, I was in Las Vegas, giving a presentation at um, the Venetian Hotel. Halfway through the presentation, I had a massive heart attack. And you know, I look after myself, pretty good shape. And bang, I had a heart attack. You never know when you're going to turn up your toes. You just start up. So you've got to make every day a winner. You've got to go in to your office tomorrow and say, I've got to change a few things around here. If I'm not as successful as I want to be, I need to make changes. Most people just go in and say, yeah, that's all very cool, and go and do the same stuff again. You can't do that. You have to change. So... You've got to do it now. The, um, the message I think that I wanted to get across is that traditional media is dead. And new media, digital media, is coming up on us much faster than we think it is. And it's accelerating really quickly. And unless you're part of the solution, you're going to be left behind. And you know, I've got a radio show, and um, I was saying on the radio show yesterday that I've always had mentors that are older than me that um, have been successful. How many of you have got mentors? Well, I've always had mentors that are older than me, that presumably are wiser than me, that have had experience that I haven't had, that have made mistakes that I don't want to make. But now, I'm getting mentors, and one of my mentors that I interviewed on the radio show yesterday is 21 years old. Why do I have a 21 year old mentor? Because there's 1,500 new apps every day. 1,500 every day, and most of them are for retail. So let's say there's 1,000 new retail apps coming out every day. How many of you could name 10? And you know, there's like two million out there. The only way to get across them is to have mentors that understand that stuff and up and up with. So I've got a mentor, 21 years old. And that's really, really, really important. What I'd like to do, I'd like everybody just to stand up for a minute. I'm like, you get, you to get enthusiastic for God's sake. Underneath, lift your seat up, have a look under your seat and see if you find anything. Come on, don't be lazy. Let's see. What do you want to find anything? Uh, 
What do you want? A million dollar check. million dollar check. What do you think? What do There's money actually under one of those seats. Oh, there's actually money under two seats. Anybody find it? What is it? Anyway, there's money under the seats. Have a look when you, when you finish. But the message is if you want to make a buck, you've got to get off your ass. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you later. And if anybody would like to buy any of my books, there's an order form floating around the place. And if you'd like to buy it, I'm, I'm on the plane. A bit later, but if you uh, check me out, I'll be around. And if you want to buy anything, just fill it out. Or you can um, email it to me. My email address is on the thing. And I look forward to seeing you. I thank you very much for being a great audience.